Hello and welcome to the LMI webinar series. My name is Aaron and thank you for joining us today. Uh, today we have with us Anushka and Boris who are both of our application engineer extraordinaires. And today they'll be going over the scripting tool, just kind of an introduction to scripting tools 101. Uh, this is something that's been asked for a lot and uh, Anushka will be providing a couple of examples and demonstrations uh, and Boris will be here for any questions that you may have. So before I hand it over to them, I'd just like to let you know if you have any questions during today's webinar, please ask away, but please use the chat on the right hand side of your screen there. Uh, we'll do our best to get to answer all of the questions. We'll either have pauses throughout or uh, a question and answer period at the end. And also, if you want to watch this again, this is being recorded. Uh, just check your email box at in a couple hours after the webinar and uh, you should be able to see a replay video. Uh, or it'll also be up on our LMI YouTube channel in a couple of days. All right, without further ado, Anushka, I'd like to hand it over to you. Thanks, Aaron. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Anushka, and I'm an application engineer here at LMI Technologies. Uh, welcome to Scripting Tools 101. In this webinar, we will be briefly introducing you to uh, what is a script tool. We will go over the basics of the script tool and how it is different from the other measurement tools that you typically see in the GoCater interface. We will talk about what are some applications when you might need to use the tool. Uh, we will go over how you can add and configure the tool, and we will be also going over some of the examples. In all our demos, we will be using pre-recorded data um, using an emulator. And towards the end of the webinar, we will be going over some of the limitations of the tool and add some tips which you might find helpful in using the tool. And as Aaron already mentioned, we will be taking questions towards the end of the webinar, so make sure to type your questions in the chat. So let's get started. So what is a script tool? Um, a script tool is very similar to any other measurement tool that we have seen or used in the past in the GoCater interface. It produces measurement results and decisions. However, there is a key difference in between the script tool and the other measurement tools. So what is the difference? Measurement tools are already pre-designed to measure certain measurements or features and output the specific outputs. However, uh, using script tools, users uh, can themselves write scripts to take measurements from other measurement tools to produce custom measurements. So this gives uh, the users the liberty to produce, um, to make their own custom measurements depending on what's fit for their application. So uh, it, is, uh, it uses C-based uh, syntax and it supports uh, standard C operators. Uh, we will go over the uh, functions and in the examples when we demo. So as we went over it already, when might you need to use the script tool? So if you have any application that requires any kind of modification or calculation on any of, um, on any of the existing measurement tools output, then script tool would be, uh, would be a good way to, uh, would be a good fit for that application. So some of the examples are if you want to change a unit of, um, of a measurement or you want to find the average of a measurement over the last n number of frames, or if you want to find the minimum of a measurement over the last n number of frames, then scripting tool is a good way, uh, is a good, um, good tool to use for that application. So script tools can be added or removed in the same way as the other measurement tools. It can be added from the measured panel. So once you click on the measured panel, uh, you can select it from the drop down in the tools diagram option and add the tool. Uh, we'll, I'll show it to you uh, when we go over the example. So scripts also support multiple inputs from multiple measurement tools and also supports multiple outputs. Multiple outputs can be added using the add button uh, when you add the script tool. And each script output is, has an index and an ID associated with it. Now we will be going over our first example, which is a very basic, uh, basic example. Uh, in this example, we will go over a basic script that shows how you can perform arithmetic operation on a measurement output from one of the measurement tools. 
I'll be quickly switching to the emulator uh, to demo of this example. So as you can see, we have already gotten some scans of, uh, of a block of a box. We have gathered five scans uh, for five different boxes, and we will be so uh, we will be showing how the script tool can be used for that. So as I already mentioned, the way you can add the script tool is from the measure panel. So once you click on the measure panel, you can add it uh, from the tools diagram dropdown. And you can see this window where you can write your script and you can expand it using the full screen button and hit escape to escape out of it uh, to, minimize, uh, to minimize your script. Multiple outputs can be added using this add button. Uh, the index is uh, the one, the number right next, to, uh, right next to output and the ID is the ID of the output. So to access any measurement, you must either uh, you must either know the ID or retrieve the ID uh, for the measurement tool for the for that measurement. So as you can see, the surface bounding box tool gives you the uh, width of the of the block in millimeters, and we will write a script to take the width measurement uh, from the bounding box tool and convert it to inches. As you can see, it supports uh, standard C operators and uh, C operators. Uh, so in the beginning, we are just assigning the tool's name and the measurement's name. Make Always make sure that the name is uh, the same as the one that you see in your, uh, in your interface, which is, for example, this is surface bounding box and the measurement tools name is surface bounding box because this is a parameter that will be used in the functions below. Once you assign the name of the tool and name of the measurement, we check if the measurement exists. To check if the measurement exists, we use one of the built-in functions name the measurement name exists. Once we verify that, we retrieve the ID for the measurement that we want to use as an input for script tool. So this ID is the same ID that you see uh, that you see at the bottom of the uh, of, of your measurement tool. So every every uh, so every measurement, as you can see, has an ID for it. And to access that measurement, you must know the ID. But when we are using the script, we just retrieve the ID by the name of the tool and by the name of the measurement uh, by the name of the measurement. Uh, once you retrieve the ID, we get the value of the measurement using the measurement value function. And once we get the measurement, this is the value that you get uh, in millimeters. So this is the value that the surface bounding box tool returns. So this is 11.96. So as you can see, this width is 11.96. Now we're going to be using a simple division operator to convert it uh, to inches. So width millimeter divided by 24.5, that gives you the width in inches. Once you have your final result uh, after computation, you, you want to send it to your script output. So there are multiple ways of sending your, uh, sending your value to your output index. One of the functions that is most commonly used is the output set at function, because that gives you the option of sending values to specific indexes. Like I already mentioned, that every output has an index uh, has an index and an ID assigned to it. You can either use uh, either you uh, you can either use the um, output ID or the output index to send the value to it. So using the output setup, we are sending the width millimeters to the script index one, which I have already defined at the top as zero. So it's sending the width millimeter uh, to output index zero, and it's sending a decision pass. So pass is your pass is defined as one, and fail is always defined as a value of zero. So if your measurement does not exist, then you're just sending a failed decision with a value of zero to the outputs. 
So this was our first example, which showed the conversion of uh, conversion of units of the measurements. Now we will be going over our next example. In the second example, we will go over how you can use persistent memories to store values in memory and use it to calculate the results of a tool over time. In our example, we will calculate average over the five scans of the box that we have collected. So there are five scans of this uh, of this gauge block, and we will be using the script to write uh, to write uh, to take the width measurement from every scan and compute the average towards the end uh, at the end of it. So as you can see, the surface uh, surface uh, bound, uh, surface bounding box tool gives you the width, and as you can see, that from box to box, the width varies. And at the end of the five frames, we want to write a script so that it takes this width measurement and computes the average at the end of the fifth frame. So the two most important functions when using uh, when using memory to store uh, to store the values in memory and get the val uh, get values from memory is the memory set function and the memory get function. Uh, th those two are very crucial when using uh, memory. So in the same way that we did before in the previous example, we are assigning a name to the measurement tool that we're going to be using, and we are assigning a name to the measurement that we're going to be using. And we are just defining some of the values that we will be passing as parameters in, in the functions. So a good practice is always make sure that you initialize your memory. Uh, so you can check if your stamp frame is equal to zero and then assign it, assign it a value of zero by using the memory set function. The frame count is always zero whenever the script is called the first time. So it will just happens once when you're starting your script. After that, in the same way as before, we check if a measurement exists by the name of the tool and by the name of the measurement. Once we do that, we retrieve the ID for the measurement using the measurement ID function and we compute the last sum. So the last sum is basically this, uh, the sum that we have up until the last frame. For our first run, it's going to be zero. But as we update it, uh, as we keep on adding our current width to last sum, uh, we, we have to store it every single time. So uh, we, get, we, get the, uh, we get the last sum using the memory get function. And then we compute the current width of the current frame using the me measurement value function. And once we do it, we add it and update the current sum in the memory using by using the memory set function. So once we reach the end of the frames, which is if your stamp frame is equal to frames number, which in our case is five, because we have five scans. Uh, we compute the average by using a division operator by dividing the current sum uh, with by the number of frames. Once we have the average, we send it uh, to our output index zero in the same way that we did in the past using the output set function. So this covered our example of using uh, persistent memory to store measurements and calculate average of a gauge block over number of frames. So Anushka, I might take a quick pause while you're switching back to the demonstration. I have a couple sure. of questions that I'm hoping to be able to, yeah. yeah. Um, so Damien's asking, let's say that I want to decide whether the value of the measurement is within the values that I get from the PLC. Is it possible to get the value of the received data via, for example, Profinet in the script? Boris? Sorry. Yeah, we're not even seeing something. Uh, uh, and, uh, to receive the, the data from the PLC, 
received. Uh, it's a reserved. Uh, there is a four words that can be uh, that can be retrieved that you can send from the PLC to the go cater, and uh, script uh, should be able to read those. Those are res reserved. Uh, I think they're index zero to to three values. Uh, just uh, sorry, I'm a little bit disorganized. That's right. Maybe what we can do is yeah. You should be able to. You should be able by the. You should be able to receive and compare the values, the limits. That that would be the shortest answer I can provide. Okay. And Damien, if you do have any further follow-up questions, you're more more than welcome to come uh, email at uh, email us at training at lmi3d.com, and I can pass along to Boris or Anushka. Or 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 directly to us. Uh, yeah, I using can... the using the support uh, using the support option in the LMA website, so you can just file a ticket if you have any questions, and we can just look at it directly. That's great. Uh, and but then, it uh, is second... definitely possible. Excellent. And a second question, just to be conscious of time, from Maria is, is it the case that scripts, uh, I think LNX1 is associated with output one? Script index one. So uh, in, in the example that we had, uh, uh, the script index one had a value of zero. Uh, we defined it as integer script index is equal to zero. So that was associated with output one, output zero. So I can quickly show you what I mean. It's taking longer than expected to share my screen. Uh, if there's a, uh, yeah, sharing your screen is taking a little bit of time. Maybe we can address the question at the end of today. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, sure. Ahead. Let's keep going then. Yeah. So we went over the two examples that we had, and now we will talk a little about the material, some of the common applications. Uh, we can, you can use, uh, like we already mentioned in the examples, uh, you can use arithmetic operators to produce outputs. You can also uh, output results based on correlation of multiple measurement tools. You can use logical operators to produce conditional outputs, as the example as shown here. You can also use persistent memory to store values to calculate a result from a tool over time. Some of the limitations of the tool are, uh, tool are that the scripting tool supports only one script at one time. So you cannot add more than uh, one script tool. The scripting, the GoPedal scripting does not support syntax checking. So always make sure that if you make a change to test it right away so that you can keep track of the changes you're making or else your GoPedal script is gonna give you invalid data. The last thing is profile data. The 3D profile data is not available to the script. So to access or compute on 3D profile data, you have to use Go SDK. You cannot use script for that because to the script, only measurements from other measurement tools are available. Some things to keep in mind is always make sure when you start your script, always make sure that you check uh, your measurement exists and uh, check if the measurement is valid for that tool ID, because if your measurement is not valid, 
that would mean that the goalkeeper script would operate on invalid data and would give you incorrect results. And always make sure that the execution time of your script fits your application uh, requirement because scripting tools have a limiting processing capability. So if you have larger scripts, uh, then you would want to check its execution time. And you can check the execution time by going to the dashboard panel in the and check on the pers uh, performance profiling option as shown in this image. So that's all we have for the Goalkeeper Scripting Tools 101. Now we will be addressing your questions in the chat. So Nushka, were you able to uh, share your screen so we could demonstrate? Yeah, I'm going to try. I think yeah. we could demonstrate that script index. OK. Yeah. It's taking longer than usual for it to load. For some reason, it's totally not able to. Meanwhile, uh, I'd like to add that I responded to Damien regarding the variables coming in from the uh, PLC. The runtime variables, there is four of them that you can send to Gocator, and they can be read in a script uh, using the runtime uh, variable get32s function, where you uh, the parameter is indexed which one of those four you want to read and it returns the value that's there and then you compare that value to your current measurement and and make a decision upon that so yes it's all documented in in the user manual uh, in the section about scripts and scripting function Aaron, would you be able to pull up the emulator and load the support file that's shared on the uh, server? Because I'm not able to share my screen for some reason. Uh, did you want, so you asked me if I could do that? Uh, if you could right just now. share, yeah. Yeah, like yeah we could, sure. Yeah. Give me, one, give me one minute just there. Which version did you make? Uh, you yes, can uh, you can upload any of the examples. Okay. What are we doing? So we just want to uh, show that uh, how the indexing uh, the index the output index is sent uh, using the output setup function. Um, Maria had a question about that. All right, and it's the yeah, the first one. First one, yeah. There we go. Which whichever you just add a yeah output and say ten times ten. Yeah. So as you can see, Maria, here towards the end of it, the output in the measurements, you can see if you could just exit out of it, Aaron. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see towards the bottom, like uh, the measurements, it's output. So you can add multiple outputs using the add button. So Aaron, if you could hit on add. So the number in front of the output is the index. So if you can add one more, Aaron. So it's, uh, the indexes are in order. So it's the first one is zero, the second one is one, the third one is two. In our example, uh, we assigned, uh, if you could go, go to the example, Aaron, the code. Code, cool, yeah. Yeah, so if you see uh, on line 21, we assigned uh, script index one, the value zero. So that is your output, the first one, the output zero. The second one is your output one, which is assigned the number script index two. 
And towards the end of the code, you can see uh, we have used the output setup function. And so we are sending the average on the script index one, which is your first output. Does that clear your question, Maria? Yeah. That's great. Even I could do it. Um, all right. Uh, I don't see any other questions come in. Maria says, thank you. I think that answered uh, Maria's question there. Um, if we don't have any other questions come in, um, Boris, Anushka, do you have any closing remarks for today? Oh, just I, I just mentioned, forgot to mention one thing that uh, other than the built-in functions that we showed in the examples, we have many more of them uh, that the GoPager script supports. You can find them in the manual. Yeah, that's, that's all very good. I would like to add. And if you have any questions, like Aaron already mentioned, just feel free to uh, open a support ticket and we will take your questions from there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just to expand the point on uh, the manual, uh, please do go to lmi3d.com. The manual is there. The HTML uh, manual is much more easy to use. The, the uh, search function is fantastic compared to the PDF. So I highly recommend you using the one online. I actually posted a link there in the chat room to the Absolutely. manual, to the section of scripts. And uh, so if you guys can copy that link and, and follow it, uh, since it's the scripting is based on Pico C. It support, uh, supports pretty much all the standard libraries. So it's not reduced to plus minus or divided or whatever, simple operators. Uh, but you can get uh, some more sophisticated uh, functions, library functions, and use those as a, in the regular C program, right? So. Uh, and uh, as well, I wanted to say that you don't need to really assign the index to a variable and then reference that variable in your output statement. You can directly put in output zero, whatever value, output one, two, three. So uh, it, it's just your preference, right? Or readability of the, your, the code later on. But typically uh, for the indexes, I don't supply the uh, macros or, or define the index. Uh, but for the uh, demonstration purposes, that's that's uh, good to show. And uh, you can basically even uh, output parameters uh, by saying memory get 64 S times five and it will output the proper number. So. So it's up to you, your creativity, what to do with that and uh, needs of your applications, obviously. The uh, scripting was added to the tool set for cases when uh, the computational part on the measurement data cannot be done in a PLC, for example, or some people don't even go into PLC or, or, or send the data to it. Uh, to PC, they directly controlled via digital outputs, some gates or or what some other equipment. So when there is a need for, for some computational code, that's why this when the script comes into the place, and you may not output all the select for the output all the measurements you're taking. You just select for the output digital output, the output from the script. So let's say you're measuring 100, 100 measurements, but you want to output uh, true on digital output one and false on digital output two. And that's what script is very good at. Well, that's all I wanted to add, some practical use of, of that. That's all. That's great. Boris, thank you so much. Um, I think that's the end of today. I would like to thank you, everyone, for joining in, taking the time to watch. Uh, Nushka, thank you so much. Boris, thank you so much.
Thanks, no. all. all right. Thanks. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for attending. You, all too. you too. Bye bye. bye, -bye.